from a most amazing artist. I'm coming to you from my home studio on our virtual day and I want to make a video for you all about Australia because we have traveled from Europe to Australia starting this week so month of February will be Australia and so I hope you have fun with this video I'm going to do some fun things with you and then hopefully I'll see you back at school very very soon let's get all right, arty friends, we are going to start this lesson with a book, which is my favorite way to start. Um, this is a very old book, but those are often the best. It's called This Is Australia. It's by a man named M. Sasek, and I did a little research on him. His name was Miroslav Sasek, and he wrote a whole bunch of these books, like This Is Texas, This Is London, this is New York, this is Paris. He just, he traveled all over the world making these books for children. So this is a nonfiction book. That means it's about real things and real people, but it is illustrated. It doesn't really have any photographs in it. There might be one or two, but I don't know for sure. So it looks like it might be fiction because it's illustrated, but it's actually nonfiction. And my favorite thing to do with a nonfiction book it's not so much to read every word that's in it, but to read things in it that interest me. So we're first going to talk about the beginning and ending of this book. This is M. Sasek right here. He always does a self-portrait. That means he painted himself. Here he's at a kangaroo cro crossing sign. At the end of the book, he always paints himself leaving the country. And I absolutely adore this one. He's riding a kangaroo, which is just so cute. All right, so when I go through this book, I'm not going to read it to you because that would take a really long time. <clears throat> Usually nonfiction books are packed with words and packed with information. So I'm just going to kind of give you a glimpse of this book and talk about some things that I like in this book. If you really like this book, I have this book in my classroom. When we get back to school, you are more than welcome to look at it as long as you can do it respectfully. This book was first made in 1970, and here is the title page, and it says, Greetings from Down Under. This is Australia. This is a plant called the Kangaroo Paws. <clears throat> and I think today my plan for you is to teach you to draw a kangaroo, so that'll be kind of fun. So it starts off with a little bit of historical information about how, how Australia became what it is today. Um, I won't go into all this, it's a lot. <laughs> then I love M. Sasek, how he makes these little rectangles to show all the buildings. And this is a airplane landing in Sydney. Sydney is Australia's biggest, oldest, and most colorful city. And it is the capital of the state of New South Wales. So Australia works a lot like the United States. Each one of these territories here is kind of like its own state and it has its own capital, kind of like our states do. All right, then we get, most of this I just like to see the pictures because I think uh, Miroslav Sasek is an exceptional artist. He is very good at drawing buildings and he does a great job showing people. I really like how he draws these little school uniforms on these boys. They're off to school. This is the famous Sydney Opera House. If you ever look at things about Australia, this will show up. Let's see. So just lots of stuff about what you might see in Australia. Of course, in 1970 when this book was published. This is the best part is the animals. Australia has some very interesting animals that are not found anywhere else in the entire world. So I am going to read this part to you. One meets one's first Australian animals in the city's Taronga Zoo. And they are the strangest lot you'll ever see. Birds that don't fly or sing. Quadrupeds who use their tails as a fifth leg. Some of the world's most primitive species survive in Australia. So it says the kangaroo is Australia's goodwill ambassador. The whole world loves him. The kangaroo is born only one inch long, naked and blind, and he climbs through his mother's fur into her pouch, where he stays for about four months. The little baby here is called a joey, and the le leader of a kangaroo herd is called an old man. <laughs> All right, so others in the kangaroo family are the tree kangaroo, 
the wallaby and the rat kangaroo, which we call nowadays the kangaroo rat. We have kind of switched that. The emu is Australia's biggest bird, and it does not fly just like the penguin that lives in, the penguins live in Australia also. They don't just live in the North Pole or the <coughs> South Pole. This is a stilt, and I think it's called a stilt because its legs are really long like stilts. And this is a black swan, and swan babies are called cygnets. It's kind of cool. There's a kookaburra, and they have a very interesting song, a wombat and echidna, I probably didn't pronounce that right, and a lyre bird, and of course, a gentle koala, one of my favorites right there. Now, for our lesson this week, we drew a platypus in our classroom, and we talked about the platypus because it's a really interesting animal. It's like a mixture of a bunch of different animals. I'm going to read this to you. Platypus looks as if he were forever unable to decide what he wants to be. He has a beak like a bird, so he has a duck bill. He swims underwater like a fish, but he does come up out of the water to breathe air, he and she. He has fur like a kangaroo, lays eggs, but suckles his young. That means the moms make milk for their babies. They also have feet like a duck. So they have a duck bill, duck feet, a beaver tail, kangaroo fur. They're just a mixed up fun animal, I think. All right, then we have more cities and he draws kind of some of the famous buildings in Canberra and I might not be pronouncing some of these right. Shows a family having a picnic. This sign you'll see in Australia, it means watch out for kangaroos crossing the road. Here is a coat of arms for Australia. It's got a um, kangaroo and looks like an emu. More buildings. More buildings and churches. And this shows the Royal Botanical, Botanical Garden in Melbourne. So it's pretty cool. Look at all these different trees and things they have. It's really pretty. I really like palm trees. Oh, here's another animal, the Tasmanian devil. He is a meat-eating marsupial. Marsupial means he has a pouch, like a, or the mom has a pouch, just like a kangaroo, to hold their young. A distant relative of the kangaroo, this one is not exactly a handsome devil. <laughs> yeah, they are kind of kind of mean looking. I think that's how they got the name devil. Okay. I like all the people that he finds to draw and like he just likes to find interesting people to put in his in his books. Let's see more buildings. This one's kind of fun because it shows things that Australians like to do. So I think this is a I'm not sure if this is called bocce. I don't remember what this game is called, but they're basically rolling these balls along the screen and trying to hit the other balls with them. And Australia has thousands of miles of beaches and a lot of people swim in Australia. And here's some guys playing billiards. Lots of swimming going on in Australia because the ocean completely surrounds it. It is a continent. All right, more buildings. This one has a river running through the city. That's pretty cool. And you can even see a bridge back there. That's fun. Oh, look, parakeets or lorikeets. We have those at the Oklahoma City Zoo. It's pretty fun. Here's a koala riding on a German Shepherd and a man holding a koala. <laughs> That's funny. Koalas are also marsupials. They're just like kangaroos in that they have a pouch to hold their young. Platypus or platypi do not have a pouch, so they are not a marsupial. I'm not sure what they are. <laughs> more fun things. Here are some natives. They're called Aborigines, the people that originally lived in Australia. Here's some Aboriginal art, which I think is really fascinating. This is a picture of a kangaroo. It's often done on the skin of a tree called an ochre tree, and they use all these different colors to make pictures. So I, thought that, I think that's really pretty. And we have some Aboriginal art in our classroom, so when we get back to the room, I'll show it to you. Trains and I don't know. I guess this is a tr a tree sanctuary. More Australian people. <laughs> and here's all these little tour buses and these people walking up this gigantic sandstone mountain. That's pretty cool. 
I would look at this. He says the coloration of this changes several times a day according to light conditions and reflection from the surface and moisture in the air. That's pretty cool. I didn't know that. All right, there's a lot of sheep in Australia. That's a big thing that they raise. They farm them for meat and for their fur. And if you hear that noise, that's my dog. She is getting up off the floor. <laughs> Here's gold. I guess you can find gold in Australia. We're almost done. Look how beautiful this ironwork on this building is and how well he has painted it. That's pretty cool. Here's a really big tree. That's pretty cool. This is this says this log of this tree. This tree was 363 years old. <laughs> wow. It's an old tree. <laughs> some old architecture okay and we are done friends so here's a lady she has a bag that says proud to be Australian she's got a little puppy with her and we see Mr. Saysack right here he's leaving on his kangaroo and at the end you can see a lot of the books that you can check out from your library or you can come to Mrs. Evans because I have all these books in my art library and you can look at them all right now we're gonna get ready to do our project so for your project, you're going to need some paper, and it can be any paper. I just have grabbed some construction paper from my room. You can use paper you find in your recycling bin. You can use printer paper. You can use notebook paper. You can use the back of any homework that you have that doesn't have anything printed on it. Any scrap paper is fine. And crayons are ideal if you have them. Markers are even better. And this is a really old set. <laughs> so whichever um, things you can find to draw and color with, just find those. If you have watercolors, that'd be great. Um, I'm probably going to draw and color with the markers. So let's get ready. All right, artists, I hope you have all of your materials ready. Remember, you're going to need paper, something to draw with, and something to color with. We are going to make a kangaroo today. And mine is all different colors, just to help me know which parts to draw first, second, third, and so on and so forth. Um, so I'm gonna put it up here so I can look at it. And I'm gonna be using a black marker today because it shows up really well on the camera, but you can use a pencil, whatever you have to draw with. A pen you found in your kitchen drawer would work, okay? The first thing we're gonna do is fold our paper. And we do this to kind of give us a marker on our roadmap. Right now, this is a completely blank piece of paper. It's really hard to tell where to start a line, where to stop a line. If we fold our paper, it gives us a little marker on our roadmap to show us, oh, I need to stop here, or oh, I need to start there. So we're gonna fold it like a birthday card. I'm gonna come over and do your very best at this, friends, even if you have to stop the video and do it. I'm just matching up the ends. Just like this as best as I can, maybe. Then I'm gonna put my finger in the middle, just like that, and sweep it out to one side, sweep it out to the other side, and I have what's called a birthday card fold or a hamburger fold. Now I'm gonna open it up, make it flat, and turn it where it's tall or vertical in front of me, because we're gonna be <coughs> making a vertical drawing of this kangaroo. All right, now let's get started. I'm gonna get my marker ready. Okay, so the first line you wanna do is gonna start here. We're gonna start here at the left, and don't forget, you can pause this anytime you need to. You can stop it if you need to catch up. We're gonna go in just a little bit and stop and make a dot just right there, okay? Then we're gonna draw the kangaroo's back. So we're gonna start at this dot and we're gonna make a curve that goes up just a little bit. You don't wanna go any farther because you want room for, it, for her head, okay? Then you're gonna move, like put your marker or drawing utensil here, pick it up, move over just a little bit to make room for the neck and draw a curvy line going the other way back down to the fold of the paper and stop, just like that. So now you should have these two curvy lines. All right, next thing we're gonna do is draw the part of the pouch that sticks out to hold the baby Joey. 
So we're going to start right here. We're going to be drawing on the um, fold of the paper. Come out just a little bit. You just want enough room for a baby to fit in there. And then we're going to draw the rest of the pouch. And we're going to stop about halfway here. So I might just go ahead and start and connect it just like that. And then I want to put my kangaroo mama's arm right here. So I'm going to make, I'm going to wait for you for just a second, actually. So make sure that you're caught up because <laughs> I know I'm kind of going quickly. Okay, so I'm going to put my marker up here and make a curvy line coming down. Then I'm just going to come back around just a little bit, but I don't, I want to stop to make it look like her arm is right there. Okay, now we're going to draw your kangaroo's head and the baby's head poking out of the pouch. When you draw the head, you want to draw the back of, a, of the head with a curvy line. Then we want to make two long ears. So go up, curve, and come down. Go up, curve, and come down. And if they go off the top of the paper, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Oh, and you know what I forgot to do, friends? I need to protect my table. So let me put this paper under something that I won't get my table. I don't know if you, eh, you know, I don't think you'll be able to see it that well. So let me just leave it on the table. It'll be okay. These are washable markers, so if I get something on there, I'll, I'll be able to wash it off. Okay, so now we're gonna make a long line coming out for her nose. And we want it to curve around and join right here at her neck. So turn and come back to the neck. And if it doesn't join, just help it along a little bit. Remember what we say in class, just like Dory, just keep drawing, just keep drawing. <laughs> All right, now we gotta do her eye. So right here in the middle, we're gonna do a round dot for her eye. Her nose is just a dash or a slit. And let's give her a smile because she's happy. She's got her baby in her pouch. So now we're gonna draw the baby down here. If you'll start right here, Come up just a little bit. We're making a smaller version of these curves. And we're gonna to go to the edge right here of this line and come up just like that. Then I'm gonna make a smaller version of her head. It's gonna be facing the same way and everything. So a curve for the back of the head. Then two long ears that are straight lines that have curves at the top. And a long curvy nose, but not as big as mama's because it's a baby. Don't forget to join it here. Then we're gonna put in our eye, our slit for our nose, and this baby's happy too. Give it a little happy face. Okay. Now what we need to do is draw the pouch and start drawing some legs. So the pouch stops right here. We're gonna do a curvy line down just like that. It's gonna stop about right here where the mama's arm is. So I'm gonna put my finger down here just to kind of help me know where to stop it. And I'm gonna draw a curvy line all the way down and stop there. There we go. That worked pretty well. Now I want to draw her leg and her Back leg is very strong and powerful. Their back legs have these big curves. So I'm gonna start right here in between the arm and the pouch. And I'm gonna draw a big curve coming down. It's gonna go past the pouch and stop. See that? Then I'm gonna draw a matching line over here on this side. Just like that, that's for the other leg. So now I have these big curves for the back legs and I have to draw her feet. Their feet are very long, so they can jump really far. So I'm gonna draw a long line and then curve it down. A long line and then curve it down. And I have to draw the bottom of her feet too. I'm gonna do this one first. I'm gonna come back, go a little bit past where I started 
and this one's gonna come back and probably join into that one somewhere. If it doesn't, just make it do the best you can. Make sure your line goes past this, this little um, bend right here because you have to draw the back of the foot longer than the leg. Now we're gonna draw her tail. So right here I drew a line coming up for the back of her foot. I'm gonna start at the top of that line, come around, and make a really long tail. I can't fit the tail out this side of the paper, so I decided to curve it around. <laughs> now this is a straight line. Now I'm gonna do a curve at the end, and I'm going to draw the tail back up, all the way back up, until we get across from this little point right here. Here we go. Draw, draw, draw. And I got bigger when I got up here. I stopped right there. Friends, I only have a couple of lines left. Isn't that wonderful? I just have to join this tail line to this line, like this. And I have to put her other arm right here behind where it looks like it's going behind her and behind the baby. And then I wanna draw a line here to show that her tummy is white. So I started right here and went up to her neck. And friends, that's how you draw a kangaroo. Isn't that fun? A kangaroo and for <coughs> Joey. You can add all the details to, you want to this, like texture lines. So if you wanted to do texture for fur, for instance, you could make little dashes like this. We did this on our platypi. Remember, platypi means more than one platypus, and a group of platypus or platypi is called a paddle. I'm not, I think a group of kangaroos called a herd. You can also maybe, if you want, add some little arms for the joey. That'd be kind of, oh, that's cute. Um, you can decorate it. You can put trees in the background, all kinds of stuff, friends. All right, I hope you have a wonderful virtual day, and I will see you very soon for more Australian fun.